So we got the door, mirror, me and my PJs, got my coat. There's Chris making some tea. Damn right. Um, here is the bathroom, me again. Nice a big bath, toilet, shower, very nice big shower, me again. Then the lights are a bit weird in here because it's like, and then this oh, the is the room. That's a so the sofa that turns into a bed. And then this is the beautiful big bed. It's very nice, lead on it already. And then, outside, can't really see it much. Now we're pulling up, guys. Jesus. Yeah, that'll be weird. And we're here again. Hello, it's me again. It's nice to see you again. Again, again, and it's all over again. Alright, let's have a look around. Damn, there's already people getting on the fall. No, it's Fortnite. Doing chair massages today, neck, shoulder, back massage. Really Fair enough. Come check us out. We'll do later. Note to self, need to check that one out later. My sweet darling, Yorkshire tea. Oh, I love it. And they're back again today. First a tank and now a chopper. Oh. One of these things, you can get yourself a dog tag at the end. Oh, more dog tags. Oh. So what you got to do? There's four things on it. Yeah. Is it all the tanks this time again, or? All the tanks. I don't know. You got one already. I got two for last year. I'm gonna get a new one this year. Oh yeah. So there's four things on it. What you do is you go around to each stand. Once you've done an activity, so we've got like the, the range at the back. We've got an airsoft range. So we go and play them. Yeah. Very cool. And um, once you've done the activity, they'll give you a stamp. And at the end of it, you've got to get one stamp to get on the end. I know, but I'll come back and do it later. Oh yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right, let's keep going. Meet Space VR. What? Zero latency. Oh, hey! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's the swords, but there are some beautiful lads. Hello again. I have returned, but this time in a suit. I, I got. I, I'm the one who bought like four or five body pillows and a load of mouse mats. Yeah, yeah. I wore just a shirt last time. What? It was just a shirt. Yeah. I was the one who looked like I was trying to dress up, but forgot half the costume. <laughs> they get cooler every single time. I can see you've got more of a booth this time. Got a bit of an upgrade. I was going to say, it used to be like this tiny corner booth. I said a long Oh, that is nice. All right, let, let's show you guys around. So, got a few kimonos. Few no ideas. Oh, what's this? Necklaces. Interesting. And some figures. We finally got some this year. Uh, hey! Not with any figures, you didn't. Was it August? Because I went to the April one, and there was literally four figures in the whole convention. Yeah, no. I I had a look through the whole thing last time. And there was only four, so I think we're on a different. Oh, Final Fantasy Seven. Oh no, no oh, no. What's the prices? What's that? Let's see if we can zoom in. Well, that's that is indeed quite the price. It's beautiful. But 
about Ray Murrow? Uh, they just knocked off Jokes' mum. Yeah, I know. Hey, Chris, I've seen one. I've seen oh. one that possibly been again. Which one? Um, you seen the 90 quid one? Yeah, that's what see, I've seen. See under the 90 quid one? Yeah. Where's the 90 quid one? Uh, oh. Boa Hancock? Yeah. Damn right. Also, they have Xbox controller covers. Uh, Rain Goku. What I'm going to do is... I'll... Oh, that was beautiful. It's the Mercy Blaster. Oh my god. Road Hog's Hawk. Contained. Oh wow. More. More katanas. Oh. oh wow, it's actually got weight to it. Yeah? I know, but that's Cloud's Cloud Buster. Oh, that's the Cloud Buster. It is. This yeah. is my first con, and I'm just losing my mind. Like, first one ever. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, Thank we you. found you. I told you it's the lightsaber guy. Back in a little bit again. No problem. We're still here. Oh, we can. I'm guessing you only have one of these. Hello, guys. Oh, we're having an absolute blast. Uh, we're on the final day of the con. Got Jake over it. Hello. Over it. He's currently enjoying. Uh, do you want to show the camera? He got a signing from Lady Demetris herself. It was just over there. Absolutely fantastic. I've got a load of figures. I've got more figures and some body pillows and other little bits. Uh, unfortunately, the. Uh, White jackets are a bit too pricey for me, but I'll be getting them next time. Uh, I've had an absolute blast with everyone. It's going to be really sad to see this all go, really. And we've got loads of pictures to send to our fantastic editor, Callum, who will be editing all of this monstrosity together. See you later. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Oh, God. Um, uh, yeah, we'll be going to uh, the next one. So the next Insomnia, which will be in August, or as I'm hearing now, might be in September. Uh, we've had an absolute blast. We've spent plenty. We're going to have a load of fun in the next one as well. Uh, I'm going to leave Future Me to finish this off kind of go over what we've got, what we've had fun with. Um, I might do a voiceover on the editing phase, give a bit of something to use and go, well, we had an absolute blast. It's been a lot of fun. I'm very much looking forward to doing this again. And yeah, thank you everyone for letting me take some amazing pictures with you all. And this is me, Phoenix cameraman for the uh, Insomnia Gaming Festival. Having an absolute blast with Absnia. And I'm looking forward to doing this again. And next time, I'm not, I'm coming as press and not as priority weekend. And it means we get to see a bit of the behind the scenes, get to see more. And yeah, I hope you guys have an absolute fantastic day. And I'll leave future me to finish this off. All right, bye guys. Now, I, I want you to decide. When the thinking comes out. Yes, that is an amazing name. Yeah? Yeah. I just feel like it needs to be like cute and plumpy yeah. and, <laughs> and squishy. Glad you like it. Thank you so much. You're this welcome. is wonderful and will be great to have on the plane. <laughs> <laughs>
back on the, the ten and a half hour flight. Yeah, it's a very, very long trip. It's a very long flight, so thank you so much. Well, it's really right, you guys, sweet. you guys have an amazing day. Right, it's so hot. Have right. a great rest thank of your show. See you later. They won't do it at all. Actors on show, eh? Okay, please, huge round of applause for Nick Apostolidis. He's coming on first. Your mic's here. Your mic's here. Nicole Tompkins. Woo! So I made you run, Nicole. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. There's your, your mic's here. And finally, Maggie Robertson. I know. Alright. Oh, I think Neil wants to join. Okay. Do you want Neil too? Yes, and the wonderful Neil Lubar. We need another mic. Woo! Neil. Can we have another mic? Yes, just sit there. Come on, Neil. We can share a mic. Should we just share a mic, yeah? Okay, you guys share a mic. Guys, don't give Neil a mic. We're only gonna give him a mic when he's supposed to speak. Okay. Okay. Neutral, right here. Hi everyone, this is this is Neil. So we've Neil, Nick, Nicole. Okay, so voice acting. Let's get into it. Yeah. yeah. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna start down the line. We'll start with Maggie. I just wanna ask Maggie, like, what is it like being at Insomnia at like, events like this? Because your line has been busy pretty much all weekend. Clutches stuffed yeah. in. First of all, I was here in Birmingham at MCM in November, and Claire and I also did a panel together. And I thought you learned your lesson at that panel. That we don't ask Maggie to answer first because Maggie's brain moves really slowly. It's not as slow as my brain today. That's true. Okay, probably here on this couch today, my brain is moving the quickest. Um, maybe not on this couch, but uh, certainly on that couch. What was the question? The question is, have you enjoyed yourselves? Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just been such a blast. It's it's so well run. It's so much fun. The art's amazing. There's so many activities. And here is Claire Redfield, Stephanie Banasello. Stephanie Banasello, everyone. Is it okay? 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 Is Insomnia, and I love that Nick is just a huge dork. Like you're a huge, huge nerd. Huge dork. But you're on the other side. What of a the nerd. Table. Nerd. But what is it like? You're, you're meeting people. Like, is this the kind of event you would have come to when you were younger? Yes. I didn't even know what conventions were until I went to my first convention in 2019 to RE2, and when I went to it and saw all the the passion, the pop culture and everything, I was blown away. Couldn't believe I'd never known about them. And yes, I would have been here all my childhood, meeting like all of the voice actors for the games. I've been playing video games since uh, uh, about 1989. Living where you age, all very just, all very old. <laughs> like, like, we're hungover. Full disclosure. <laughs> I miss it. Very hungover right now. And also, I just wanted to be known that I beat their asses at Soul Calibur last night quite a lot. Sorry, oh. just let me say. Oh. Neil won like once, and then, I mean, I really beat you quite badly. So I, I just had to say it out loud. Neil, you're a big nerdy gamer type as well. Absolutely. What kind of games did you grow up with? What did I grow up with? Yeah. In terms of. Games. Uh, I was a much small player. Um, I used to love, or I played D&D &D more than So that really translated into computer games very easily. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, and four, the original Fallouts, and some huge fans. So that was like my go-to escape as well. But anything like Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, and long RPGs with most much to use I'm so sorry, is that a starring from Baldur's Gate 3? 
Sorry? I said, I'm so sorry, is that a Starium from Baldur's Gate 3? Baldur's Gate 3, that was an unintentional. Oh, it was my gosh! Absolutely it's going to be incredible. Possibly game of the year, uh, this year. I'm going to, because Stephanie's joined us at the other end. Stephanie, yeah. I just want to ask, like, you know, you, I mean, you're all, you all play characters in video games. How cool is it to see yourself, or yourself as a character in a video game? It must be pretty cool, right? I mean, it's really cool. It's also kind of interesting. It's an odd kind of feeling too, because it's a well. If we're talking specifically Resident Evil, um, it's kind of interesting to see someone with your voice, your body movements, your facial reactions, but not your likeness. It is the oddest feeling in the world. It feels very like. You are me and I am you, but you are not and I am not. So it's kind of an interesting feeling, but um, but it is really fun. It is such a cool experience. I have to admit, um, for me it wasn't as odd when I was playing it for some reason. Like it felt kind of normal. Like once I got past it in the very beginning, who it was odder for was my brothers who played the game. Uh, I have three brothers, all love video games, and my youngest brother was playing. And he was like, he's like, so I was good with it at first, and he's like, and then I couldn't take it anymore because every time you died, I got you killed. I just heard you screaming for your life. So I think it was harder for them, maybe cooler for me. So. And uh, sorry, Maggie, it's your turn next. Every <laughs> time I ask Maggie questions, she's like, hey, crap. Lady Dimitris, such an iconic character. Sorry, who? Lady Dimitris, who? You did it right, right? You did it right, Claire. Oh my god, Nicole. I'm sweating here. I'm hungover. Please get with me. Just go. Interest. It's a great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Maggie, I, I can't such an iconic role, an iconic character. When did you realize, when was the moment that you thought, hold up, this is quite a special character? Was there something that you read online? Was there something that said to you? When was it that moment, that turn? Um, Great question, Claire. I'm so glad you asked me this. Uh, the moment I realized Lady Dimitrescu was a special character was on July 26, 2000, at 3.58 p.m. Uh, I had a lot of fun with her. And I think there's, you have your special time with the character. So there's the time that I realized that she's special and and that was probably upon first seeing the um, character design that Capcom created because she's just so distinctive. And the way that they designed the character is so interesting because when she even opens her mouth, she just is oozing character. Visually, she was just so um, expressive. Yeah. So I had a lot of fun interpreting her and playing her, obviously, and then of course to see her become the iconic figure that she is today and to see her go viral on the internet was really interesting because we were all still under NDA, so I was just watching the internet go up in flames over this character that I played and wasn't able to talk to anybody about it. So that was super fun. I talked to Nikki. <laughs> Because we were we were NDA buddies, so we sent a lot of pictures yeah. back and forth. We sent a lot of pictures back and forth. I was like, look at this tweet. Look at this thirsty tweet. Back and forth with Steve Kneebly, our cinematics director. Director, he was like, don't look at me, thirty four. We're like on it. And I was like, cool. Too late. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if there was a specific moment. I think she's always really jumped off the page and been iconic, both in how Capcom designed her and how Anthony Johnston, who was the writer of Lady D, wrote her lines. So there's just, they really handed me so much gold and so much acting fodder to play with that the second I met her, so to speak, I knew she was really special and I didn't know she was last playing with her.
and become voice actors. I speak to them after panels, they come up and ask questions. What are some of the most common questions that people ask you when it's about trying to get into what you do specifically? Yeah, I think specifically because it is seems so abstract and everyone has such a different path into this particular industry a lot of times it's like how, literally the most basic like how do i get, how do i do it um seems to be the kind of question that i that i get a lot and usually my answer is one there's no one right way there's everyone has such a different path everyone has such a different life story if you ask every single one of these people up here we are not here for any of the same reason. Like we are here for so many, our, our stories are so different and unique and yet we're united and we share a lot of similar, you know, elements of the experience of getting to, to act and getting to do this. But I always say like, get in class, start doing it, start working on the craft and you have to really, really love the actual craft and the actual grind and the actual auditioning and getting on the mic and hearing yourself and getting on camera and watching yourself and getting on stage and failing and getting back on stage and doing it again um, because that's that's most of the job and that has to bring you joy because you're going to get so many no's so you just have to get used to what no means and let it slide right by because it's never personal we're taking something that is incredibly personal ourselves our craft our story our love of humanity we're pouring it into these characters but we're still in a business and everyone else in the business won't care about it the same way that you do. So it's a lot of like, oh yeah, super personal, and then like, yeah, I don't care about it at all, whatever. Stay. I just dropped right. my way in. Yeah, <laughs> right your way in. Go oh, easy, easy, easy. Nick, in terms of like, I mean, I think you made a really good point about the, you know, you get rejected a lot in this industry. I don't think people take that into account that it's not personal and there is a lot of rejection. You see people kind of like at their tables and up here and talking about what they do, but there's so many things that artists have to go through to get that point. I wanted to ask Nick, how, is, how do you deal with that sort of rejection, I guess? I, I kind of like, just again, it's not personal, you just have to like shove it to the back of your brain, but does it get to you sometimes? That is a good question. Uh, very valid. We have all dealt with that. Just no, 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 no. Or silence. Or so you never. You often, often it's more often silence. I was than gonna say it's silence is what you get. So you don't even get acknowledged. Yeah. So you have to be good at just being like, oh, I did it. Forget it. It never happened until you maybe hear back. But uh, you have to develop a thick skin. For anybody here who wants to do that, you have to get used to the rejection and just celebrate every little tiny piece of progress that you make as a big piece of progress. That's that's how I see it. Um, I set, early on, I set a lot of small goals, achievable goals, like weekly, monthly, and I would try to reach those. Uh, aside from like the, the one big goal that so many people set is like getting rich and famous. You can shoot for that, there's no, no problem shooting for the stars, you know, I'm all about that too, but if you can reach the small goals often, uh, you can pat yourself on the back and, and see your progress, you know what I mean? Um, and just like anything else, whatever you guys want to do in life, any career, you're going to have to work hard anyways. So just bust your ass, that's what I tell people. It's really like, you know, sink your teeth in, bust your ass and go for it. The thing that's the, you know, I sometimes meet folks who want to get into things and they they, I think that they think it's going to launch them into that fame thing that 100% I was going to ask Neil like what is it what is it that keeps you going like, why are you, you know, is it what's the passion that keeps you going because it's not about fame and it's not about oh god no like, I mean, like nobody in their right mind wants fame I mean people want fame but nobody should want fame so maybe that's not what I mean, I don't do myself things, I'm a working actor, right. I've been lucky enough to be in some great projects that I love, but I don't consider myself uh, yeah. to yeah, only because that's not what the aim is, I'm not talking about the aim of what they want to go for, right? I mean, for me, it's just telling great stories, as, as is Nicole, Maggie, Stephanie, this one. telling great stories, having fun, making something that will hopefully entertain you, that's our job, we're not like heroes, we're not nurses or doctors or lawyers or you know whatever we, we play these people hopefully truthfully in a really interesting way that may move people one way or the other that's you know all this is it's fun it's supposed to be entertaining 
So I think that it's a big part of um, the fact you can't take yourself so seriously. Sometimes. I think that is also a good way of remembering why are you doing this? Are you doing this because you want to be a storyteller and you want to do the work? Or is it the smart other the idea of rich and famous, which quite frankly, you have no control of whatsoever. So for me, I mean, I've, been, I've been on all kinds of difficult financial fiduciaries, let's say bankrupt sometimes almost. I was homeless for a while, I didn't know. It was an interesting experience, but having nothing. So that every job that I get, I mean, I'm I'm incredibly grateful. Even if it's like a tiny little an hour's job in a booth or a, you know, a three year gig, every single one is, is important. So I think that's the attitude that anyone should have for anything they do is gratitude and not being entitled, not assuming that you've done this one thing immediately you'll be given the offer. And I think that's the hardest thing. I don't know what it's like. Oh, come on, man. You guys don't. You guys, you guys talk about it's the, you. It's the most communalist thing. It's like an incredibly compelling answer, but they're just giving me the giggles. the most eloquent yeah, I was trying so hard to pay attention and listen to you just so you know all the way over here everyone in the audience probably saw I tried really hard I was listening but there was three of them Neil was trying to just on it Maggie was distracting me and I'm trying to be like a good interviewer I'm like don't put the fuck that's on me you were trying to wrap the question out of my mind I just can wrap it in the bow if I can if I may allow just wrap it in the bow would you would you wrap that I respect you, Neil. I'm over here. I will go over here. I will keep eye contact with you. Right Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just wrap me in a little bow. Hey, neither of us think Neil. Um, I just think like there is a, a movement towards entitlement that a lot of people sometimes have that they assume that life owes you something. It does not Chris, right? uh, try not to say. Right. It doesn't owe you crap. Yes. No, you can. Right? Life is not fair. People can be for choose to be. And you should work hard. You should work hard and throw yourself at whatever it is you do. <laughs> uh, so focused like on Like Nicole Tompkins, who works incredibly hard, one of the smartest crafts people I've ever met, and was almost halfway, literally halfway, almost halfway, half um, and he's one of the smartest crafts people I've ever met, and an amazing actor. And this is not my accent, this so, yeah. so if you have an aspiration to be a creative, none of this is by an accident. Yeah. This might be. No. Can we give it up for Neil Newborn, who is also Woo! one of the most brilliant, eloquent, talented, focused, multi-talented people that I've ever met or worked with. So, as much as we tease and play, he, he knows how much we all incredibly respect. I've learned so much from this man. I've done five projects now with him, and, and was, you know, just, I don't know, I've learned something new every time. And I learned that he's my dad this trip. <laughs> I had no idea. Neil is all of our fathers. <laughs> he's all of our dads. Neil is your dad. He's also your dad and your dad. He's everyone's dad. What? what? Sorry. Oh my god, it's chaos. Of course it was going to be chaos. It's this panel. I wanted to ask you guys because as soon as I met you all, I met Stephanie and Maggie back in November. I've just met them all on this trip. What I got was they were massive goofballs, like straight away. I don't know what you mean. We're some of the I don't most like serious that. and professional series. <laughs> and I never laugh. Ever. Sure. You just keep squeezing that thing. We avoid it at all costs. <laughs> just keep squeezing it. That's, that's it. an emotional support stuff animal. Yeah. So it is. Is it, what, what, what is that exactly? Is it a beer or an ice cream? It's not a beer. <laughs> it's not a beer. <laughs> it's a beer. <laughs> I don't know. It's like some kind of strange, like, yeah. Is it a beer, beer ice cream? Like, name it Pebbles. When you all met each other for the first time professionally, was that the, was the chemistry instant between all of you? Like pretty much straight away, yeah. Uh, we well, it's interesting. Uh, you two have as you two should start because you chronologically chronologically start. Nick and Steph are up. Well, I mean, we we just bonded really quickly over Resident Evil Two back in 2016, and we've been friends ever since. Neil. 
It was. We, so we've known each other. We've, we've been close friends for seven years almost now. Almost seven years. It's been seven years? But then, since the start of when we... Wow. But then then we met these guys, I think, during the times of COVID. Yeah, well, it's funny because... Right. Yeah, well, it took us three years for the creation of our game. So, so it's funny because Nick and I, when we were first on set... We would have like moments together, but we'd be split up a lot. So I feel like our relationship bond was built after we finished the recording, and we were in our waiting stages. That's when like our like our friendship started to like because it's similar. Like we were in NDA, so we just like we're both like okay, okay. And it's like Nick, what about this? What about that? What about that? But I remember in our session when we were talking with all the developers, and you and I like realized how we both loved. Resident Evil, when they sat us down, was like, what would you want to do with this? And what would you want to do with that? Like, Yeah, but shout out real quick to the uh, to the pandemic and Silver Linings, because uh, these guys had just done uh, Resident Evil 3, it came out, and because everyone was isolated, we're doing Zoom calls to family and friends, uh, we did, I think it was a, maybe a charity stream or, or a big stream to connect with the community, like people like you, and we all met each other online, and we've been friends ever since then. Even this guy would start reaching out to me and be like, hey brother, how are you doing? Just checking in. I'm like, I don't even know this guy, but I love him. It's a stream through RE2, and I got both you, and, and that's like really how I got to know you guys after time. We had our first bromance day about a year after we started, we met online. I know it's a classic story of boy meets boy. Uh, so we, we met for a text mess. And then the first time I met, you're wearing the same outfit, so no <laughs> That's not true, he just has iconic clothes. <laughs> we did all our, a lot of our relationships between the games because, you know, like I, I, I never got to work with anyone here except for Nick. So all of our relationships were kind of built online first you know and then we went from there and then we had like our very first meetings like true meetings like my first meeting with nicole was so epic <laughs> like in person meeting because we met each other over and over we didn't in person that's what i'm meeting. saying in person yeah. meeting. our first in-person meeting was wasn't it the panel when like the run-in and then we like grasped hands and like it was like it's happened. It's happened. Like we've now finally. united. Like and it and it was at a convention. It finally happened at a convention. So, so and then for me and Maggie though, Maggie and I we had to have our own um, crazy talk about minions and lunch. <laughs> we went evil. <laughs> and, and Neil probably has a different memory of me meeting him. But my first like really impactful memory of Neil was at the callback for Jill. I was like, hi. You're an experienced man in video games. What do you think looks cooler? Should I hold the gun like this or like this? Because before I go back in there, I'd love to look really cool holding this gun. Yeah, it was something. Steve Kniebel and I have been friends since by the age, so he, I was being cast as Nikolai, but I was also helping out reading him. And it was you and Jeff Shine actually was there that day. And both you and Jeff. Jeff Shine! Jeff Shine's amazing. If you don't know who he is, you should check out Jeff. His voice is incredible. It's really amazing. But he and you were the the standouts. I immediately, like both Steve was like, like these two immediately. So you just, just say, what do you think of those two? Like, Absolutely, those, those are your guys. And it was great. There were some really talented actors there as well, going for both roles. I think both of you were pretty much like, yes, that's who you Especially because we just need to make sure you can hold a gun. Like, you know, <laughs> something like that. I have a gun, good. Yeah, I have a gun. So, yeah, we were lucky. We met the, the, the car park. You, myself, and Jeff. But Jeff and I both started saying, well, you want to hold a gun like this? It's like, oh, it was so great. Yeah, you, 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 you ask an experience, <laughs> you ask a guy who is experienced with a gun how to hold a gun, you, that they will launch into a monologue. We're goes, happy to help! Yeah, they're immediately like, ha, ha, ha. I just waiting for you to ask. How lost? So, Nicole, what? Yeah. 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 Lady, and I get extremely excited to show people how to hold a gun. Right. Uh, yes. If you come to me, Absolutely. you know I will give you a one-on-one -on -one 
and be like, here's how you do it. You may never have to do this, but I'm going to show you. And that might be the masculine energy in me. I don't know. Oh, no. I mean, anyone that knows. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> yes. I, I know yeah. it. Neil, right. can you show me how to hold this gun? Right, let's go. <laughs> I want to see it. Bet you didn't know you were going to get this out of your pedal today. <laughs> Please, so people can hear. Okay, this is a mime. This is a mime. This is miming. Miming is the act of miming. Miming does not include words. Mining, mime, mining. We're mining for good mimes. Miming is the act of showing meaning only through the use of your body. And here we have a perfect example of a mime. Of an example of how to learn how to use a gun. The instructor over here is instructing his protege on how to carry the weapon, on the proper stance for the weapon. That's it. Excellent. That is the proper stance. Round of applause, please. Is that your that's how you shoot a gun. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice, mate. We're going to hand over to fan questions in a second. I've got one last question to ask Nick. How has the Resi or Brubeck been received? How has it been received? I'm just saying. The reviews are off the charts. And I. I think they are. Let's go! I think they are deserved because, uh, uh, coming from a fan perspective, I have played it with my little brother and my family, and it is a phenomenal game. And uh, I'm just really happy. I mean, it's uh, some most probably everyone knows it, that the original is my favorite game of all time since 2005, and so just to be a part of the reimagining of this, it's pretty wild and insane. And so I'm just happy to be here. It's a good time in life for me. Round of applause. Oh, okay, hey, I have a question. Hands straight up. Right. Yes. I'm done. No, I'm done. Just it's over. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. All right, I'm going to get. I'm she was saying how sweet Nick is, how much she loves him. Oh, very sweet. Oh, good. That's it. I'm going to go over here first oh. and then I'll come to you. Hello, my dear. What's your name and what's your question? Nice and loud. Uh, my name's Ivy. Um, oh, no. You know who? We can't hear anything. Can we have more volume, please? Thank you. Hello. Oh. Hi, my name's Ivy, and my question is: if you can pick, if you can pick one song that describes your character, what song would it be? One song that describes your character. What would it be? So let's start with Super not Maggie. Easy. Not Maggie. Uh, let's start with teacher, teacher. Okay, Neil, you can go first. Thank you. You have to sing it. You have to sing it. That's the rule. Oh shit. Sure. <laughs> can you sing it in character? I mean, that's it Oh, uh, well, I can do the lyrics. I do. Yes, you can do the lyrics. Wow. Okay. We're going to sing the spies and Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, Stephanie, what's yours? What you... Don't ask me yet, thank uh -oh. you. Okay, I've got it. In the middle, I'm just going really cheeky and cute. Hers is gonna be... I will survive! I will survive! Na 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 She's just gonna make it. Okay. You got it? Thank you. Cheesy. Grab on all up and let's cruise for a while. Leave your troubles far behind. You can hedge all that on a clean Corvette. To get you there right on time. Heavy metal. <laughs> yes, it does. All right, Nick, do you have an answer for us? Mary had a little lamb. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, she read my mind, actually. Yes. Okay. Mary had a little lamb. Love it. Leon Kennedy, everybody. One way or another, I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way. Love it. Okay, Stephanie. I can't.
can't think of one, so I'm just gonna go into, if the internet knows this one, you know this one. And 
I was going to actually go back and play through it again when I was starting to go into the role, but funny enough, um, it was kind of messy with me in the beginning because I didn't know if I was supposed to be really recreating or like like a total recreation or trying to like mimic. And I, I mean, as an actor, you want to let an actor make their choices. You want to make your own choices. And I'm just lucky enough that I had a wonderful director and that Capcom was very encouraging and supportive of like, no, you make your version, right? And then once I understood that, that's when I had a lot of freedom and I actually didn't touch the original then. I didn't go, I purposely did not look at it because I did not want to be influenced by it. I wanted to remember the essence of Claire that I remember and take away from that and then make her my own. Nick, you wanna you wanna go? For me, it was uh, a little bit more difficult because I I was such a fan of Leon all my life, and he had been portrayed by maybe four amazing actors before me, and I I was intimately familiar with every one of their performances, and so for me, I had to forget everything to not be so influenced. And, and like Steph said, and I'm sure that uh, Nicole got the same message from Capcom, is the, the freedom to just use your essence. They, they kept saying that to us. They said, let your personality shine through. Of course, there are guidelines for the characters. That's true to canon. A little bit, they're rough. But yes, bring your essence, bring your personality. Here's our new character. And the good news is we have scripts, you know, and the scripts are true to who these characters are and the way that Capcom wanted them represented. And we wouldn't have gotten the roles if what we had not done in the audition wasn't kind of along the lines of where they were headed. So we kind of went in going like, you know what, here's my best shot at this thing that's on this page. And then we just trusted the amazing teams around us to have that feel authentic to the games and respectful to the fans and all of the amazing legacy and performers that came before. And of these characters, really. Thank you. That's a good question. My first, I'm going to go over the slides. Anyone have a question here? Go back here. Go back here. Hello. Oh, sorry, I'm not really fast enough. It's over. Okay, great. Let's go. What's your name and what's your question? Nice and loud. My name's Barry. And what's your favorite moment of any of the games? What's your favorite moment from any of the games? Thank you. Who wants to start? Growing the table. Wasn't going to be flown out for an hour's work. 
So I got body doubling and setting the scene with uh, the bowl. And then the, the voice actor then covered it after. So that was a real gift to be able to play all these multiple different characters, all these mini characters. I played um, zombie uh, Brad. Yep. Zombie Brad. You also played the zombie that kills Brad. I also played the zombie that kills Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bit of a trip when you do that. So yeah. That one. Brad. So, you know, I, I, I'm very lucky that, because I started a long time ago in mocap film selection, I get to work with, with all the actors in different capacities, yeah. and consulting on the you know, director's work. So, so I'm very lucky that I get to, to see them shine and also work with them in unusual ways, to, as well as just to being a scene. So, thank you for your question. Yeah, that's kind of my, yeah, thank you. That's kind of my question. Uh, I, I keep looking at you, and we, we need to call you. Sorry, can I speak? Please pass, thank you. Thank you. Hello, what's your name and what's your question? Nice and loud into the mic. Uh, hi, I'm Lawson. Um, my question is, um, I'm an early career uh, theatre actor, and I was wondering, uh, in terms of getting into voice acting, obviously with theatre acting, the thing they told me all the, all the while in school was all about connections, and getting out to like events and things like that. What sort of things would you guys recommend to go to or people to be to get into voice acting? I feel like this is a good question for the Brit. I was just about to say, because all of us are Americans, so I think that's going to be a legal question. We should definitely, we should definitely open the question up because they're amazing and they've done loads of work. That's very good. Loads and loads of work. So absolutely for uh, But specifically for UK, um, have you started actually working? Have you actually done that? Yeah, I've done, I've done two children's theatre shows that I had my first ad. Uh, a few weeks ago. That's great. Have you done any voice work games? No, not yet. Cool. So get a games reel to get. Well, the first thing is, is keep your craft up. It, it is about connections. But it's also about connections in the craft. Do you know what I mean? You've got to connect to the text. So make sure your acting craft continually trains and improves and develops and evolves. Beyond that, when you, you can actually research indie game studios that have voice work in the games, play the games, or at least understand which games they are, and just write them. They have a LinkedIn page with your work. Games are a whole different uh, beast to film and TV. Like, you can approach, I'm literally connected to people that are the equivalent of Spielberg games. I just write them an email saying, hey, I don't your mind, but it's my work, I want to work with you. Getting an email response like, thanks, I'll take a look. You're like, wow, okay. So it happens, you know, it's possible. People are okay with it, so it's a slightly different industry. Beyond that, if you get some indie work, if you apply to some indie games, and, Try to get all the books. Make sure you also research what you should get them paid for. Because obviously there is an industry minimum that you should be paid for. And if you're lucky enough to do that, then maybe have a look at BAFTA. They're doing a wonderful, BAFTA is an amazing charity. Uh, it is a charity, actually. It's a charity institution. They really champion games, and they have done for years. Uh, it may not be that well known outside the industry for them. There's a thing called BAFTA Connect. And if you have a couple of games, like legitimate, even indie projects, it's enough for you to be able to join BAFTA Connect, and there you'll meet loads of developers, animators, voice actors, directors, loads of people, and they'll also do workshops and stuff to help you with your career. It's a really valid way of getting involved. The first step, make sure you're acting, craft your goals, that you develop it, actually, but not just enough to do accents, you've got to develop connections with character, understand character, but then you start reaching out to indie companies and offer yourself up. Um, the internet is a wonderful place and I think that because of the pandemic it's opened up a lot of workshops and classes like worldwide so there is different like voiceover networks and different things like that that will run panels and workshops online sometimes as well so you can directly be getting direction from casting directors and directors so don't assume that it's just because you are in the UK that you cannot be seen and speak to people outside of the UK so um, I would honestly Google voiceover workshops find out the directors that you really love look on IMDb find out those casting directors see if they have workshops follow them on Instagram they will then put it up on their stories every time they have it you know so there is a way for you to kind of break that cycle even though you're here you can still be seen there strange blessing of the pandemic so many things went online so many classes so many people everyone took to the web Good 
just gonna it's gonna be this side of the room this time. See this? Uh, this don't look at me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, look, no, it's a shame. Oh, oh my God, you're a bell. Hello. What's your name and what's your question, my friend? Alan. And my question is, what is your favorite RE firearm? What's your favorite RE firearm? Rocket launcher. Dang it! Rocket launcher. Uh, Nick. And then Nicole. It's just got to be the old-fashioned boomstick, the shotgun. As far as playing, the shotgun is also one of my favorites, but I'm gonna have to go with the massive, ridiculous gun that Jill has at the end. It's just absurd. The, the giant real gun thing. Okay, uh, anyone else with that? I don't know, I got a punch hole for hammers. Yeah. Put a little hammer to the head, you know? I do have a hammer that I was gonna see. Pebbles is going to be in the selfie. 